Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. I'm going to start this video off with something I got from XRP Bart. He's at XRP Bart and he sent this. This is really interesting right here. Um, this, as, you, as many of you know, Craig Wright is the guy who claims that he is the creator of Bitcoin, Satoshi Nakamoto. Well, Craig Wright is in a lawsuit and apparently the court in that lawsuit has ordered Craig Wright to show all of the, all of the Bitcoin addresses that he has money in, has Bitcoin in. U.S. court orders Craig Wright reveal 2013 Bitcoin stash and $10 billion Satoshi suit. Um, it says, Craig, this is a tweet from this uh, company or person. Craig Wright ordered by the court to produce lists of owned Bitcoin addresses along with details about his alleged blind trust. And so this guy right here, if this, if this, um, if the court actually follows up with this, Craig Wright is going to be forced to show what his Bitcoin addresses are. If he does so, everybody there, uh, Satoshi Nakamoto has a known address where a lot of Bitcoin has been sitting ever since the creation of Bitcoin. Well, if Craig Wright is forced to show these addresses, one of, one of the addresses that will be included uh, that he's showing is going to be this address that uh, will prove that he is or is not Satoshi Nakamoto. <laughs> and so, and apparently this is, um, he, he'll have to produce this relevant Bitcoin addresses on or before May 15th. So in the next nine days or so, we should know whether Craig Wright is a big liar or if he's Satoshi Nakamoto. This should be really interesting. Next, I uh, got this from X-Men XRP. If I can get rid of this, hold on a sec. Come on, computer. The computer, my computer was looking like it wanted to slow down a little bit. Okay. Um, this is from X-Men XRP at XRP 33 sent me this. Mark Zuckerberg is going all guns blazing into the crypto space with Facebook coin hunt for potential allies continues. Um, and says they, they, the widely anticipated dive into crypto space is no longer mere speculation. Over the past few months, multiple independent sources have corroborated the social media giants plans for building a systems payments powered powered by its own cryptocurrency. Um, and so, and now shedding more light on Facebook's roadmap. Um, let's see. Then it said, according to the Wall Street Journal report, social media giant is already in talks with Visa, MasterCard, and two heavyweights that control a big chunk of the global payments industry. On top of that, Facebook reportedly is also in talks with First Data, a payment processing platform. And so, and then they went on to talk about um, their attempt to address privacy concerns. Given how Facebook is currently fighting an uphill PR battle after getting caught with its pants down over multiple privacy scandals, it makes sense to view introduction of a stable coin, at least in part, an attempt to, at damage control and to boost user confidence. And so C3Nick did a little tweet to kind of address this part of it. Uh, one of five on Facebook. I find the 180 degree by Facebook remarkable, uh, now claiming to be focused on privacy and related topics. While this is clearly a push to get rid of their, their past full of privacy incidents, I think something else is going on. Let me explain in this thread. Personal data is not very highly valued among users of social media, especially when compared to other assets like money. Losing money hurts more uh, than giving up your personal information, at least to most people. Um, Facebook did not have a strong incentive to be an advocate with regards to privacy. The users do not value it as much and do not punish the company as much. Furthermore, Facebook can live off 
off of network effects which lock users into their network be it on FB, WhatsApp, or Instagram. This, this changes, however, when Facebook plans to enter the payment industry. Users have a more valuable asset to lose, money. Therefore, Facebook needs to, does need to establish more trust and get a cleaner image in order to get started in the payment market. Five hints, in my opinion, their recent marketing shift is not only correlated with their entry into the payment sector, but a causation exists as well. Good thread. All right, moving along. Uh, the next thing was a tweet. Let me see if I can, um, yeah. Next thing was a tweet from Charlie Lee. I have bad news. We have not sold enough VIP tickets to Magical Crypto Conference and may have to accept Ripple's sponsorship. And what he's joking around here, I guess they're doing a conference and Ripple had offered to be one of the sponsors. But he's illustrating here how most of these crypto people are very anti-XRP and anti-Ripple. But what I've always found hilarious myself, or completely hypocritical, here's a guy, Charlie Lee, that founded Litecoin. He's now worth over one or two hundred million dollars. So in other words, he made himself rich off of the creation of Litecoin. But somehow, he, uh, in his mind, and, and some of these people's mind, he is supposed to be somehow more noble than the founders of Ripple um, when in actuality, he's just not as smart as they are and doesn't ha has not been able to create as, as powerful and as uh, great of an organization as Ripple has. But this guy, um, I don't ever see anybody really talk about how many Litecoin he held out for himself. One thing I do know for sure is even if he, even if he didn't hold any Litecoin out for himself, Right after he issued Litecoin, he's, he probably bought for about $10 um, millions of Litecoin. So it's really, there's really no difference. Now, he may have done a little bit of sleight of hand into, in order to make it look like he didn't do anything, but he didn't do anything any different than the founders of Ripple did. They created, created a digital asset and owns a lot, owned a lot of it, but he actually, as C3 Nick points out in this thread, he actually sold a lot of his Litecoin while he was telling his followers that they should hold. And, and there's proof in C3 Nick's thread there. Next from NBK Crypto, at NBKLYRAD, um, sent me this. Regulators ready to approve Ethereum futures, CFTC Insider says. The U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission is willing to approve an Ether Futures contract, provided it sticks, all, it ticks all the right boxes, a senior official has told Coindesk. The CFTC, which oversees derivatives markets in the U.S., has already allowed Bitcoin futures markets to launch. Both, uh, both of these organizations offering cash sale contracts at the end of 2017. Um, a derivatives exchange comes to us and says we want to launch this particular product. If they came to us with a particular derivative that met our requirements, I think that there's a good chance that it would be allowed. It, it would be allowed to be self-certified by us. Well, of course they're going to approve Ethereum futures. There will be futures on just about all of these digital assets that that survive. It's just a matter of time. There's going to be every funny. I've told you many times. Every financial product that you can think of, as well as financial products that can, have not been dreamed of, will be created around digital assets. Okay, from XRP Veteran, he sent me this. Earlier, um, he had sent me another one, but this is a second video. If you go to Bank, Arc, XR, Bank XRP to his YouTube channel, it's a second video that had Naveen Gupta from Ripple in it on the New Age Banking Summit uh, in Oman. This is the fireside chat where he talks even further. Um, so I wanted to mention that. And then Sergeant Obi Wan sent me this single address behind more than 50% of Bitcoin cash transactions. Now this is a um, article that he sent to me. It says a single address has been responsible for more than half of Bitcoin cash transactions in the past month, according to a tweet by this guy. According to the Bitcoin Cash Blockchain Explorer, the mystery account has made more than 587,000 transactions since it became operational on April 8th of this year. Many of the transactions are fractional amounts of BCH and they are made with regularity. 
with three to four new transactions emerging per second. Um, it says over this period of the account's creation to press time, the whole Bitcoin Cash blockchain has processed 1.17 million transactions, about half coming from the, the aforementioned wallet. The frequency of transactions could suggest that someone is attempting to drive up the number of transactions to make the network look a lot busier than it actually is, as one commentator responded. Whatever it is, folks, it sure looks shady. <laughs> so anyway, moving along. And this is a really good one. This is a Bank XRP thread on Twitter. If you don't follow him, definitely give him a follow at Bank XRP. This is apparently a KPMG um, KPMG's blog is where this information was had. KM KPMG states, out of 1,500 plus cryptos, Bitcoin, XRP, Ethereum, and IOTA are the most important. Ripple, comparing, and then also in the thing, Ripple, comparing Ripple with Bitcoin is like comparing apples with pears. The private company behind Ripple has no aspirations to use blockchain technology to replace the payment transaction platform as we know it. That's not even what they're focused on is what the point is. Next, this was a tweet from Barry Silbert. You know, he's got the drop gold campaign going. The argument for dropping gold in favor of Bitcoin. And he's linking to an article about it. Well, he's already upsetting the uh, gold people. This is from Peter Schiff um, at Schiff Gold, his, his gold company. You might want to think twice before you drop gold. Bitcoin is a replacement for gold, not so much. So Schiff Gold has put out their own article um, so you talking about starting a war, what Barry Silbert's doing is going to start a war. There are a lot of people who have built a lot of businesses on gold over the last many years, and they aren't going to go down without a fight on this. Okay. Got this from crypto utility guy. Currency.com has launched tokenized assets and securities exchange. Check this out, folks. This is awesome. Um, look at the markets. They've tokenized uh, com securities, commodities, indices, tokenized shares. You can look at some of these, like here's the tokenized commodities. They've tokenized silver, gold, natural gas, oil, Brent, oil, crude, palladium, platinum. Then we'll look at the, um, let's see their tokenized indices. They've got uh, IBEX 35, DAX 30, S&P 500, NASDAQ 100, the FTSE, um, FTSE China, Amsterdam, so now they've tokenized all of these and let's see, tokenized shares. They've tokenized, looks like, um, these are all shares of companies, I guess. Most of them are companies. Um, and then they've also got, they've also got up here tokenized securities. Those are shares, I guess, of, of ETS or something like that. Um, and these are the shares, Tesla, Facebook, Netflix, Apple, is the shares they've tokenized so far. As you can see, folks, everything's going to be tokenized. Get used to it. Um, and finally, if at first you don't succeed, reward failure by throwing more money at it. That quote is from the government. Perfectly ridiculous, um, perfect, perfect illustration of how ridiculous the governments of the world are. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that if at first you don't succeed, reward failure by throwing more money at it or doing a bailout or a bail-in or QE123. That's the government solution, but it's not an honest solution. Digital assets are the honest solution. Thank you for listening.